Just start by saying you're such a badass. What? <laughs> like you were such a badass. Like it's hard for me to look at you and not like look to see if there's a bat behind you or something. <laughs> I mean. Well, there might be. No, you know what's oh, funny? I, 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 I do have um, a Lenny Lewis bat and I have a Black Canary bat. Which yeah. one's the better bat? <laughs> Man, you are like the second person to ask me to compare the two chicks. Um, I mean, probably the Black Canary bat is like stronger because the Letty bat is just all beat up. But that's the thing. The Letty bat had some muscle behind it and you're going to you're going to whip someone's ass with that Letty bat. You know, the Black Canary bat, that seems like more of a, you know, for show on some level. Well, and also the Black Canary bat, it's, I mean, it's Harley's bat, you know, um, and so it's like, it's not even my bat, you know, so it's not even Black Canary's bat, it's Harley Quinn's bat, so Letty's bat is. <laughs> you have, like, literally taken over that role to the point where no one could ever play that role, you know that, right? Which one are we talking about? Letty. Oh, man, you know, it was one of those things when I read the script, I'm not gonna lie, I felt so compelled that I was born to play Letty fucking Lewis. Um, you know, I, I understood her from the very first note. Um, and so I thank you. I appreciate you saying that because. So I spoke, I spoke to a gentleman you might have heard of. His name is uh, uh, Jonathan Majors. You may have met him once or twice. When did you speak to him? <laughs> uh, yesterday. Um, and uh, he said something to the effect of any sort of credit, any sort of praise about his performance is largely in part because he had great, a great person to play with. And that was, of course, you in most every scene he was in. Um, you know, yeah, Courtney B. Vance, et cetera. I mean, the cast is amazing, but he said he gave, like, say, most of the credit for his performance to you. I mean, so I'm going to turn this around. I'll make Jonathan feel a little uncomfortable here. I mean, was it kind of amazing to have such a partner in these type of scenes in Jonathan Majors? Absolutely. I mean, that spirit, I'm going <laughs> to, um, it's, I, yeah, I'm speechless now. I don't know what to say. Um, I, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, having such a generous scene partner with him, he's incredibly generous uh, with his instrument and so devoted to the craft. I, I, honestly don't think I would have survived this project without John. Like that's how deep it, it was, like our partnership. Um, I'm lightning, he's thunder. And, <laughs> you know, um, honestly having, um, having such a dedicated partner who you know you're safe to fail big. Like that's, that's, that's the security I felt where I could just dive in. I could just leap and then that would appear, you know, that he had me and I had him. Um, it's so rare to get that level of partnership um, in a project, but so essential for something like Lovecraft Country because we were expected to go and literally put it all out there. And there were so many things for me also that I, I did in this character that I hadn't done before. And it did require a level of feeling safe. Um, and I think because I had that safety net with him, um, absolutely, I, you cannot have Letty without Atticus. Letty wouldn't exist without Atticus. Um, and so I, I completely agree with what he said. Where, where were you when you found out about the nomination? I was here in Vancouver. I was in the makeup trailer um, for this film I'm shooting with Alice and Janney uh, for Bad Robot. And Netflix boss, I mean, my uh, Lovecraft Country boss, JJ Abrams, and for Netflix. And I was in the trailer getting all this mud thrown on me and get a call from my uh, publicist, which I would never really answer, like, while I'm trying to get in the mode. But I was like, what the hell are they calling me for this early in the morning? Like, something's wrong. You know, the panic started rising. And they told me, Jared, like, they're in tears over the phone. I'm like, what's the matter? Well, who died? What? Like, yeah, they, they said, 
Jordan, you got nominated for an Emmy for Best Actress in a Drama Series, and Jonathan got nominated, and we're waiting to hear who else got nominated. And I screamed. And Allison came over to me like, what? What's the matter? Are you okay? And I was like, I got nominated for an Emmy. And she kissed me, and everyone like applauded. And then I ran out of the trailer, immediately got all these calls from all my, my brothers and reps and, and stuff. And then I spoke to Misha and Jonathan and and then my brother told me, you know, your co-star Allison got nominated too. And I said, wait, I just was in the makeup trailer with her. <laughs> and so I go on set to rehearse and I go up to her and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Congratulations. And she says, for what? <laughs> I said, for your nomination today. She said, no, I wasn't nominated, was I? And I literally had to pull up the list of best actress in a comedy series to show her that she was nominated. And it was the sweetest thing. Like we hugged and cried. And, and I mean, she's a legend. She's been nominated, I think, close to 15 times, if not 15. And this is my first time. And so it was definitely, it was really sweet because she, she was just as excited as I was, you know? So that's, that's how I find out. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do a good Allison Janney because that, that voice, that was really good. That really wasn't my actual Alice and Janney, but <laughs> we got to perfect it a little more. <laughs> I mean, like, what, what do you need to pull off an Alice and Janney? Is it the pitch? Is it the, 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 the gestures? Man, when I tell you this woman is such a dream, I am having such a blast working with her. And we are in it. We, this shoot, this film's gonna be very special. And again, you know, having this, this partner in her, um, it, it's, it's quite a blessing. I'm, I'm very fortunate to work with her. I'm hanging on to her for dear life for the rest of my life now. We're joined at the hips. I love how like you, you, you dropped where you were, you dropped who you're working with, you dropped who's behind it, but you didn't tell me a title. You didn't hint at anything. I'm not supposed to know, am I? Well, I mean, it's no secret. It's it's a film called Lou. Um, okay. And it's about, um, you know, a massive storm rages on an island, um, Orcas Island, and a young, a little girl is kidnapped. My daughter is kidnapped by, well, I don't know if I can say who, but she's kidnapped and I enlist the help of my mysterious landlord, um, who's quite this mysterious, strange woman named Lou. I enlist her help to track my daughter down through the woods and get her back. Yeah, I, I mean, you both are badasses, so I can't imagine who's going to be at the the, the, the the other end of that bat or whatever it is you're carrying in this one. I mean, I've seen Alice and Janie kick some ass in movies, and I've obviously seen you kick some ass in this movie, but I probably haven't seen to this level from based on your reaction. It's, it's, it's going to be pretty special. I'm going to say that. And okay. I'm at the end of it, so I can say that now. You know, when you're kind of in the middle or in it, in the beginning, you're like, I can't call it. Now, nah, it's called. It's official. It's going to okay. be called. <laughs> Now, in terms of just how gratifying it is to see Misha get her, uh, get her moment because of everything that happened. And let's not even start on that because I'll start dropping some F-bombs about what happened because I don't, I mean, we need to get that show picked up ASAP. I hope you're listening out there. But to have, let's just, let's get past that. Let's focus on the good stuff here. Misha getting her moment in the sun. How did that feel? Oh, 18 nominations for a show, you know, that she show, she was a showrunner, creator, producer, writer, um, director, mama bear, <laughs> you know. Um, it's, I think it's very special. I think it, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very proud of her we've worked so, so much, you know, over the, I met her six years ago on the first season of Underground. We've done technically three seasons of television together. We've had a lot of ups and highs and we've had a lot of lows creatively. And um, I, I'm very, very proud of who she has grown to be. You know, she, she's a mad scientist. She really is a genius. And some of the stuff that comes out of her brain, I mean, I don't even, her imagination is just so, it's so vast. And as an artist, as, as a black female artist, it is so rare to find such a fruitful 
artistic collaboration um, with someone that understands how to write complex, badass, flawed, fragile women. Um, so I feel very fortunate to have her as my artistic sister. Your role in this show, and this is where people need to take notice. You listening voters, this is important. Um, yeah, I, I understand I was doing a little break third wall there, but I, I need them to listen to this part. Okay, they listen to all of it, but really I listen to- I love your interview process. This is amazing, sorry. Well, th I'm, this is like so random. I'm like, I got these things that pop in my head. Uh, so again, voters, listen. Um, when I talked to Jonathan, he talked about how he would run his scenes backwards and forwards going in this like steam room to put himself through this like, you're like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about because of the heavy emotional toll, you want to be prepared, not backwards or forwards, you want to be in that moment, you want to really be ready. Um, what was your process to carry this heavy load? Because we cannot discount what you did in this because yeah, Atticus had to carry the load, but there was an equal load that had to be carried by your character. I mean, and just that's just the facts. So do you mind giving me a little insight into how you prepared for these like emotional, just trying days of filming during the craft? Yeah, you know, the thing about this project is it's very ancestral. And um, oftentimes my approach is, is very spiritual. Um, and so honestly, it depends on the scene. Um, but it could be anything from prayer and, and deep meditation to uh, needing to, to swim laps, you know, literally in a pool. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say what one thing requires, okay. each scene requires something different. Um, but I, I, yeah, I worked with different teachers and spiritual teachers and tried to really call upon one thing that my, one of my teachers talks about is this idea of blood memory you know, and, and what happens when our, the memory that our blood, that our DNA literally holds, um, when that is activated. So, you know, trying to really work with the ancestral spirits, right, um, was, a, was a big part of my foundation with Letty um, in understanding as a woman, being black, you know, female in 1955, living at the intersection of multiple identities, what, how does she see the, the world? What are her eyes, you know? And so I found myself trying to really draw the spirit of my grandmother um, in that, in, in my approach with Letty and in embodying Letty. Um, and, and that's just like, you, you work with the blood memory. It's, it's really hard to talk about. It's because it's so spiritual. It's not really something that I could that I can really adequately give words to. Um, but, you know, I know that I come from a lineage of such powerful women who were mothers. Um, and so I worked a lot with the archetype of the virgin goddess, the mother, the mother who then becomes the witch, which Letty does, um, you know, to try to understand this lineage of patterns, right? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 deep, it, but it's also hard to talk about. It feels weird and yucky <laughs> to talk about, um, to try to get you to understand because it's so spiritual. It's not, you know, and and most of the job of the artist, I believe, is to is to allow the spirit to use you, you know, to to get so unblocked. Um, so that the flow, it just flows out. 